It's medicinal. Medicinal, you a lie. It's your uncle's medicinal. You borrow some. Everybody doing it ain't got cancer. That's the big lie that's in the earth now. Medicinal. Everybody ain't got uh, lupus or something that requires a, a, a real strong painkiller. Ain't got a doctor's report. It's a lie. And when you get under the influence of them things, you can't be a good parent. Go on in the room. Get out away from me. You're blowing my high. You know what? God going to hold you accountable to. You ain't that sick. I'm going to throw that in. Because that's the big deception in the earth. That ain't kingdom. <laughs> that's church stuff, man. Some of the places we hang out, that's church stuff. Well, I see Reverend Conley out there, so I guess it's all right. It's a lie. God will come in and turn the place over, Reverend Conley there, and you. That's how you know you're in the church. Oh, I feel comfortable. I felt guilty about coming in here until I saw Reverend Conley and I knew we must have been okay. That's how we do. <laughs> God ain't got no special place for reverence. Take my name out of it. <laughs> so let's talk about kingdom. Because <coughs> some... I talked to somebody and said, I've been looking for a church. Man, this ain't the one. They told me, man, I've been looking for a church home. Bruh, sis, this ain't the one. Somebody said, oh, it must be a lot of, this ain't the one because we ain't trying to establish a church no more. That's why God shut the whole thing down. He says, I want people to start thinking kingdom, not churches. Why were so many churches shut down? All the saints at home. Why? Because they were church folk and not kingdom folk. You can take it how you want to, but I mean it in love. The church is closed. We being wise. You being churchy. Kingdom people can't be stopped. Kingdom people will gather in a field. Yo, meet me in the field. Meet me under the bridge. Because we got to get two or three of us together. But just staying at home watching Netflix. Netflix is your pastor. Netflix and refrigerator, you wouldn't feel like you were saved. <laughs> God help us, we don't have to get our bread from day to day. Give us our daily bread. Suppose the Lord brought it down to that. Every day you got to go find some bread. Oh, you turn to the kingdom righteously then. The reason you can't turn now because the freezer, you got to jump on it to close it. And the refrigerator, you got to. Uh, uh. But the kingdom is different. And most of us fall to us who have been in ministry more concerned about having members. We haven't talked a lot about the kingdom. They just come with territory. We just get caught up having a big church. having a big, And you got a big mess, too. I'm going to see it. Oh, ain't nothing wrong with mega because God is mega. And if this became to be mega, it would take five of me or two of me, to the capacity that became mega, God would have to reproduce in that leader. But mega ain't better. If you don't have pastors and ministers and people who you can hold accountable because it is a microcosm of the kingdom of God. Ain't one king and that's the pastor. It's a microcosm. What we do, we try to work kingdom, the kingdom principle in church, but we don't intend to work the kingdom principle. We try to work our position, our purpose. 
our mindset. That's why most of our churches get to be a hunter and then they drop off. Because the people inside, at some point, if the leader doesn't watch, and it happens, it's so, the enemy is cunning, the people don't want to become kingdom people. They want to become church people. That's why when you witness, you only witness the black folks. Be in a room with black and white people, all y'all crowding in there together, and you reading your Bible, you're going to gravitate to the person in your color when you church it. You, when you go to church, why don't you come go to my church? White person sitting right on the other side of you, Chinese person sitting on the other side. Excuse me, I'm going to go over here and I talk to them. You church it. reason our churches are segregated like they are. 2021, soon to be 2022, is because we are churchy and not kingdom. Fish beget fish. Everything brings after its own kind. Come on. Supposed to reproduce. So when you reproduce, now you work on a job that's multicultural. There's an Asian person that you love to hang around on your job. But no, they believe in wood. I ain't going to bother them. But the kingdom is to be extended through individuals. But you only witness the white, black folks. You act like you don't know no white folks until they cut you off in traffic. Then you're flipping the beard at them and getting out, losing the shoes, chasing them on foot and all this here. But I'm a Christian and you're going to be in church. Just like, you know. you churchy. And what knocks a lot of people out, they want the pastor to keep dealing with their church attitude. And that's why a lot of us closed our doors and a lot of us feel like we can't make it. Trouble happened in our house. Amen. And our children, first thing the enemy do is say, well, your son is a drug addict. How are you going to talk to the rest of them? Poor pastor, he get to feeling guilty. Well, I guess I can't, can't leave no more, man. Can't take care of his own house. That Negro, I said it, is 40 years old. But when you kingdom, you know that each individual has a right to live in sin or to live for God. That's why we don't understand how can it be in heaven and, your, and, and you and your whole family ain't there because heaven ain't about your family. If I could get you to see that, man, we can just shut this down now. Heaven ain't about your family. The earth is where you try to get your family into the graces. When you get to heaven, it ain't going to be hanging with mama and them, Uncle, Uncle, Uncle Bill and Uncle Sue and Aunt Sue. Heaven is about Jesus. And when we think kingdom in the earth, every person we meet, we all listen, I'm shy, I don't know. They might not come to my church. Well, what's wrong with your church? You know what you're saying? My church is like my family, jacked up. Who invites somebody into their dysfunctional house unless they are dysfunctional? But when you realize it ain't your house, it's God's house. And in God's house, he got all kind of crazy creatures. He got elephants. He got rhinoceroses. He got giraffes. Don't look nothing alike, but they in the kingdom of the earth. Come on. He got sloths with long noses. He got hyenas. What in the world does the world have to need of a hyena for? <laughs> Baboon with his red behind. What in the world do we need that for? Walking, we got to watch your red. <laughs> He be asking, son, do you need some salve? <laughs> some, some, some preposition H? Or something fix you up? What happened to you? <laughs> you know you do. He he walking proudly like you could just look at him. <laughs> like, man, this you crazy. But God said, I want to have different people like that in the kingdom. Now some of you baboons, some of you gorillas. <laughs> you know, you think you're a swan, but you ain't an orangutan. Orange orangutan. Yeah, you do. I think I'm I'm you know, you I'm a, I'm a pristine eagle. You ain't you ain't no eagle. If we look at you, we say, "My God, God made a rhinoceros." <laughs> <laughs> I 
That's why we can celebrate each other's difference. You don't go to the zoo, take your kids, and then say, Joe Roxy, that ugly one. You, 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 you don't take, come on, you go to the zoo like, wow. And the uglier, the more you, wow. <laughs> Who wants to go to the zoo and ain't got nothing but sheep? Uh, 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 <laughs> the whole zoo full of uh, 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 giraffes. You'd be like, this, this zoo is jacked up. Drove all the way over there, took your lunch, took all the kids, took all work, and ain't nothing. Everywhere you go, big old long, long neck giraffe. What's in the next one? You know, they got the plaques of giraffe. Okay. <laughs> then you got one animal. Won't everybody stay there and celebrate it all day. I came to the zoo to see the whole zoo. I, ain't gonna, I don't care if you was the, uh, the, uh, the lion, the king of the jungle. Stay here. Don't go. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, <laughs> <laughs> like, dude. <laughs> you know I'm telling the truth. You get tired of walking, don't you? I want to see all of them. But yet in God's house, that difference, man, we ready to pull out our shank, ready to cut, ready to clip. We're going we gonna to do away with you. And in the jungle, which is support of God's earthly kingdom, they all learn how to operate safely. <laughs> when you see the lion coming, you better run. That's why, that's why God made you a gazelle, and you can run fast. I'm just trying to help you get in your gift. That's why you call an impala. Now, what need of God of an impala that don't run? So God has me, the lion, as the catalyst. Roar! <laughs> now, you both do what you do. Amen. I'm helping you to get in your gift. Come on, let's celebrate God. I don't want to be a part of the kingdom. Got no lions in it, man. Who goes to? The, I go to Africa. I'm gonna take me to the lion park, man. Shoot, <laughs> lion got a place. You want to go to the petting zoo? <laughs> Fifty years old. Want to go to the petting zoo? Feed them. Feed them with milk bottles. What's wrong with you? But God got a kingdom, and you are different in the kingdom. What's so spectacular about God's kingdom is every individual is a unique species. You can't, you can't comprehend that. There ain't nobody in this room like you. Somebody say, I see somebody look like you. Look like me, but wasn't exactly me. Identical twins don't look like completely in the sight of God. There's some difference about them. You differ for a reason. But your difference ain't supposed to we just celebrate you. You got to learn how to, to navigate in the jungle. Find your place. And like the gazelle, we don't like that. But if it means run and run, it's going to save your life. In other words, get to a place of safety. For a Christian, that means prayer. God ain't going to make the lion stop rowing because you want to act like a goat. <laughs> if, if he wouldn't roar, how am I sure? Well, roar! <laughs> Get you. <laughs> Did I scare her? The lion don't stop rowing because you got issues, complexes about rowing. Come on, let's celebrate God. Come on. I'm talking kingdom. You say, this ain't going to, yes, it do. Your problem is, I'm going to tell you, from, from second grade middle school, you've been trying to be like the other girls and the other guys. You won't be hip like them. You won't, same kind of blue jeans. Wore your parents, I got to have them blue jeans. Why? Because then that's what they were. Why you all have to be always what they, be a trendsetter. What do you do different for you that you wouldn't change? I don't care. They used to tell me, man, here's an old school suit. I said, well, I'm keeping them because I'm going to bring them back in style. 
Everybody got to wear the same T-shirt, same hairstyle, do the same thing. Why don't you dance different? I'm just being me. And this ain't about me. It's about Jesus. When I was a teenager, man, I started dancing in the neighborhood and everybody was doing it. Can you say that? No, I won't dance like everybody else. I don't want to look weird when I dance. Well, I did one in the whole neighborhood. Boys and girls said, oh, do that dance Steve is doing. All I'm saying is that somewhere you got to tap into your uniqueness as the king made you. When you wear a diamond and the light hit the diamond, the, di the, the, the thing that come off the diamond is like no other diamond in the world. That's what makes diamonds so precious that there ain't no two diamonds alike. And when the light hit that diamond, it's going to pull out burl, pull out purple. If the right light hit it, they call it having fire in it. Now, we don't just want to see that one color coming out the diamond because if we see that one color, we can say, that ain't a real diamond, man. That's fake. The diamond only show up pink. When we see it, what lets us know that it's something God created by pressure is that we see all the colors coming. Ooh, ooh, shoot. Matter of fact, a diamond will make you think a person is, is something. You see a big diamond and the light hit it, you'll be like, he must have some money. They must do, they must. Because what the diamond represents, that it is something only the king could make that required pressure. But here you is at the shopping center or somebody going through and you ain't even, you know, trying to hit on them or nothing, but you notice Look at that diamond. Because it says something. That's why some of y'all want a diamond. Because you want to be in the kingdom a certain way. It's your last minute. Yeah, yeah, some of you want that. And you want a diamond from someone who wants to bring order to your life in a certain way. Don't you look at me like I'm silly. <laughs> Kisses and, and, and blowing, phone calls, all that don't mean nothing. But let them put that diamond, what that diamond is saying, just that little slipping on your finger. That, oh, so we're ready to bring our lives into a particular order. Diamond don't go in your ring. And then you are, well, you know, I'm going to do what I want when I want. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hand it back. Give it, give it back. <laughs> I guarantee you, if you say that to a man, when you first put it on, now this means I'm going to do I come home and I want to go when I want to. Don't tell me nothing. He goes, give me my diamond back. Y'all be on the floor. <laughs> give it back. <laughs> Somebody give you no diamond for you to be. I'm going to do what I want to do. It means we're going to bring order to the kingdom in a certain way. And the man puts one on too because we're saying we have an order that we're going. And when that order is broken, we got chaos. That's what it means. So we got a lot of people wearing diamonds, but they don't mean, won't live up to what the diamond means. That's deception. And the reason, ladies, why a lot of men won't put diamonds on you because they didn't peep your game and you ain't going to help them bring order to their life. Y'all don't want me to go down that road. But that's what it means. Because when a man wants you, he's going to say, I want to bring order to my life and you will make a co-king with me, a co-leader a co a leader with me. With you, I can go forward. Thousands there, but I want you. So, irregardless of what the future past was, I ain't going to let this blessing get away from me. Here, baby, put this on. When he put a, a diamond on your finger, he's putting a garment on you. 
He's covering your nakedness. I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody out there, watch it. He's covering your nakedness. You ain't got nothing on your finger, and you don't care how fine you is, fine as wine. But then he say, now, you, but you're naked. Oh, you self-made independence. I ain't got nothing but love for you, and I believe God. But I'm going to tell you the truth. When your husband married you, he didn't marry you for you to be independent. Now, I ain't talking to forget the, the married women, but all you want is hollering about the brothers it won't do nothing because they ain't found one that they know will help them in their kingdom. That's why when you try to find one, If you had taken time to look at them and check them out and read all the cues, even in leap year, and you say, would you be my king? They're going to say, yeah, because they know that we already know that. That's what a ring means. I'm going to cover your nakedness. I'm going to cover a man's nakedness. He needs somebody to cook for him. He needs somebody to clean. But no, but that ain't what the sister talking about. I ain't cooking for him. He can go to, we going down to, to this place and that place. And he needs somebody to clean for him. I ain't getting married to me. I ain't his servant. We're kings that serve one another. I serve you by getting my lunchbox and my hard hat helmet and going to construction every morning. You serve me when I get back, there's some beans and bread. If that don't work, let's figure out what's going to work, but you got to serve me. You got to serve me, I got to serve you. That's how we cover each other's nakedness. If I didn't remind him that the electric's going to get cut off tomorrow by 9, it wouldn't be on because he got other things on his mind. And it ain't my job to put my foot on him and, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. you stomp a king and see what you're going to get. Why a man can't stop a king that's in a woman and a woman can't stop, stomp a king and see what you're going to get. And a whole lot of kings is in exile. <laughs> Man, I ain't got to the scripture yet. <laughs> you know what a king in exile means? He got a kingdom that is about to throw a coup on him, and they citizens trying to kill him. So he goes in exile, go to America, go to France somewhere. And a lot of the people that supposed to be in our life in exile. That's why you've been married 20 years. He went off and left you. But he right there in the room. He right there under the hood of the car. Ain't nothing broke, but he breaking it so he got a reason to be fixing it. <laughs> she out somewhere. How many times you going to polish your nails? You ain't got but 10. You go, I don't know the nail shop. <laughs> you in exile. Oh, we got problems. You, I'm losing my church. We got exiles. They going home to straighten up stuff. Four big old men get up at the same time. They must be going home to handle business. Go get them, brothers. <laughs> the brother, I preach all the brothers get up from the church and walk off. Say, we, we, <laughs> they going home to handle some stuff. Go on home. Church dismissed for y'all. Go on. Huh? Well, you saw it. <laughs> you saw it. <laughs> or either they were going in exile, but they were like, it looked like me, they were going home and handling their business. <laughs> Ladies, you can do it too. You get tired of being in exile. You can. You're a king. That's why you should expect more. Don't be settling for somebody who 
you say, treat me like a queen. That ain't good enough. I need somebody to treat me like a queen. That ain't good enough. Because when they treat you young ladies like a queen, that means they can flatter you, take care of you, but then they don't want to hear nothing you got to say. They don't want to submit to you. You getting it? He treats me like a queen, buys me things, and takes me out. And <laughs> yeah, but as soon as you say no to something, then he gone. Because if you know anything about politics and relationships have politics in them, you scratch my back, I'm going to scratch yours. You stop scratching my back. I'm going to try to keep scratching yours. But if we don't get something together soon, we're going to go into war. And the first war is the Cold War. Before we start launching bullets, oh, I'm talking. Before we start launching missiles, what are missiles, brother and sisters? My words. Ladies, I see you. You're just as prim and proper and cute. I ain't got nothing but good to say about you. But you are good at launching missiles. But brothers can launch missiles too. Your man could be like 300 pounds and built like a refrigerator. And you can be a little tiny something. But you can say something to him and he'd be like, oh, my God, she done cut me down to the knees. Men, you can say something to your woman. She can be ever so proper, prim, doing the best you can. But you can launch a missile at her. You're getting fat there, Beulah. Now, all of a sudden, she can't walk past.